this episode, we've got a little bit of a change of pace for you guys. It's early December, which means it's time for the annual Runaway Campers Rally at the Mill Dam Recreation Area located in Ocala National Forest. We expect there to be 25 to 30 runaway campers on hand and lots of great people. So stay tuned, should be a lot of fun.
right, guys, I'm here with Ed. Ed is a retired Marine. Thank you for your service. Um, and lived about hmm, seven miles or so from Runaway and was passing past the factory and decided he wanted to do some travel with his trike. And uh, here you see the result. Uh, he ended up with a cool camp and he's willing to show us around and uh, let us see what kind of modifications he's made to it. So Ed, appreciate it. All right. Uh, first modification I did actually was the max fan. I love the max fan because when I'm traveling, working with the trike, I need everything streamlined. You know, nothing protruding. So that I can lower down. I went with uh, Renergy. They had the best quality by my research. Uh, this is the high end panels. And even with this partly cloudy day and running my solar all night, I'm at 93% power with two Renogy 100AH iron phosphate batteries. Now, the secret to towing with a trike is your weight and balance. Now, I've got my solar set up there. It's all Renogy, 1000 watt inverter, because that's all I need for this setup. Uh, 40 amp MPPT. And then my batteries are mounted underneath the bed, just in front of where the axle is. Uh, that compensates for my Bogue 30 quart fridge freezer. They balance each other out. I uh, got a camp, a cot size bed frame, cut off five inches so I could have height, because it was too high if you wanted to sit up in bed, stock. And they were easy to cut down, you know, just six legs with rubber caps. I just popped caps off, cut them, put them back on. Then I, because of the max pan, I found out the runaway campers almost airtight. You can actually hear when the windows are closed, doors closed, you can hear the fan struggling on exhaust. So I added two vents, a lower one here, and then you can just see up there, I put one high on the other side mm -hmm. so I can get cross ventilation low and high without opening the windows. So I got wet one night in uh, Iowa, having the window cracked open to get air. And I see the on the side here, Soldiers Freedom Outdoors. Tell us a little bit about that organization and, and how people that are, that are interested in helping can help. Sounds like a great cause. Well, Soldiers Freedom Outdoors is for wounded warriors, whether it's physical or mental injuries. Uh, my wife and I, that's our organization that we like to donate to. I've got a lot of friends I serve with that well, that's how I actually found out as a friend from Afghanistan. Uh, he went through their program. Awesome. And it helped him a lot. Uh, what they do is it's all outdoor activities for veterans. Every month they do something. Uh, they just completed a hunt with a dozen deer hunting. Uh, at least once a month they do fishing trips. And they're located in Central Florida. Uh, they're getting ready to, I think in about a month and a half, do a forging class where the members will be able to make their own knife. It's an entry level class and then they can, ex they can actually carry it on with the instructor outside of, this is just to introduce them to see if it's something they want to do. Right. Sounds like a great organization, folks, if you're interested in, in supporting it. Um, soldiersfreedomoutdoors.org is going to a good cause to help those that have served our country. And then the Stop Veteran Suicide. Uh, during my 17 months in Iraq, 39 months in Afghanistan, I lost 13 people I served with. I left in 2014. Since then, we have lost 13 to suicide. 
So we've lost as many to war as we did to suicide. Yeah, and if I can just help one veteran with this, to me it's worth it. I get nothing out of it. It's just, uh, I had a campus, I thought I'd use it for some good. Awesome, what a great, what a great idea. Um, amazing, amazing the visibility that you're providing to that, that issue, and it is a crisis. I mean, that's just way, way too many. Uh, to be losing so any any uh any visibility we can give to that cause uh my hat's off to you so and then around the back you see we've got a box here that he's put on the back now in times like when it's overcast or i'm going through storms i need power my solar won't handle it i have a thousand watt out propane generator well, I needed a way to use it where I could close it up and not get stolen. And so I came up with this. It also counterbalances. Now, it looks heavy, but the total weight back here is less than 50 pounds. Uh, I got an aluminum rack that's like you can get at Harbor Freight. I got it off Amazon. I cut it to the width of this box. Now this box isn't metal, it's aluminum. It only weighs 22 pounds. That's crazy. And then with the rack, you know, yep. I cut it down and everything, so it's probably at about 10 pounds now. And then the way I mounted it, I don't like just using the pins because you get movement. So it's bolted with grade eight bolts and then a uh, clamp that keeps it from moving up and down. So sturdy. Yeah, because any kind of rocking like that yep. will affect the front end. I got you. So everything was geared to tow behind a trike. That's the reason why this is a 13 gallon tank, 13 pound tank, that will actually run my ALP generator for almost 60 hours. Wow. And on a side note, I went to go fill this. Now, I ordered this on Amazon. It came in, I mounted it took it down get it filled the guy started filling it and told me it was already full of propane wow and said it, it's the third time he's had one of these little takes come in new that was pre-filled wow. wow and they come from Taiwan crazy crazy it, that, it's hard to imagine that little thing running that generator for 60 hours but yep. that's pretty amazing well Folks, as you can see, it's quite an impressive setup that Ed has here, and he's traveling around and bringing awareness to a great cause. So if you, if you feel so inclined, please go online and support that organization, um, and let's bring more awareness to this great cause. Thank you again, Ed. Appreciate you taking uh, the time, buddy. Uh, thank you. guys we are here with Andrew and Carrie this is Andrew in his festive attire for the holidays so guys tell us about your camper what year it is how long you've had it and what you like best about it it's a 2022 Range Runner uh, we've had it just over a year um, best thing I love about it is that we can load up in 30 minutes and be on the road and unpack and 
30 minutes and start enjoying camping. Uh, one of my favorite things that I purchased is the little pop-up tent. Big game changer. Obviously, you don't have room to stand up in the, the camper. Um, but it's a, it's a shower room, it's a toilet room, a changing room. It's one of the best things I've, I've bought. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for talking with us, guys. Enjoy. All right, we're here with Jeff. And Jeff, tell us about your runaway and what year, how long you've had it, all that good stuff. Okay, so this is a 2021 Range Runner. Um, it's all composite. Uh, and I uh, bought it new back, back then. And uh, been real happy with it, actually. Uh, one of the uh, best features that I have found, and this is recent, is to add the Max Air fan to it. And the reason for that is, you know, we would travel north in, uh, in the summer and it would just get so stifling hot. And I've got other, uh, had other fans that I've had on there, like the, that would connect to the screen and it just wasn't enough. But I find even on the lowest setting, the Max Air fan, and this is as an exhaust, is that you, put, you open the window just to drop and you get a nice draft coming through and it barely uses any electric. Uh, and it makes a huge difference. Um, when I travel with my wife, for example, I have the porta potty in there. And uh, to be frank, it makes a big difference having the Max Air fan drawing the air right where the porta potty is. And we actually put a little uh, uh, sh uh, curtain over there. So uh, just keep a little. Speaking the truth. Is, Everybody has to go. Yep. Everybody's got to go. Uh, you know, before we put the fan and the curtain in, it was, uh, and if I was up at the time, I don't mean to use it in the middle of the night, but uh, I'd bury my head in the corner and tell me when you're finished. <laughs> you know, now she, she's got the privacy, the fan does what the fan does, and uh, it's, it's uh, very relaxing. There you go, guys. Max Air Fan. And the good porta potty is a life changing event. Oh, Outdoor showers over here, I'll show you that in a minute. 
but I guess I'll have a gelatin. Yeah. That's yeah. if you yeah. start giving yeah. 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 them craving. All right, guys, I'm here with Bob, and the rouser that you see behind me has had an epic adventure in 2023. This thing has covered over 26,000 miles and been all across the United States. And Bob's gonna tell us a little bit and show us on this map where all he's been. So on February 16th, I left from Key West down here in Florida. I live in Palm Beach County. I, I, I started down there, came up. I went to the route, to the runaway homecoming on the weekend of like the, the 18th through the 20th in Summerfield, Florida, near Ocala. Came up through Tallahassee, and then I stayed on pretty much the I-10 corridor. You know, I stayed at a campground in Alabama, uh, Louisiana, right outside of New Orleans. I did a rally in uh, Texas, in Huntsville. Spent 18 days going across Texas. So that was just really nice to have that time to really do stuff. Came up through El Paso, up through North uh, New Mexico, crossed a little bit of Colorado into Utah, spent a couple days up in Salt Lake City, came back down, went to uh, Yosemite National Park, Grand Canyon while I was in Arizona and California, you know, went across the Mojave Desert and spent some time just south of LA, went to uh, Huntington Beach, Surf City, USA, came up the West Coast, Oregon, you know, Northern California, Oregon, it's just you're on the 101 and you're just driving right along the ocean. You know, it's a stone's throw from Washington. You know, a lot of farmland. You come a little bit more inland. Went to a really cool place called Point Roberts. It's in the United States. It's below the 49th parallel, but you have to drive through Canada to get to it. Went through Vancouver, up through uh, British Columbia, the Yukon, into Alaska. Spent a month in Alaska, and that was the highlight of the trip. Just unbelievable you know, the beauty and the grandeur and, you know, like the Alaska range of mountains is 500 miles along. So for days, you're just driving along with like these rocky mountain sized beautiful mountains. Came back down through Alberta, uh, British Columbia, Yukon, Alberta, British Columbia, Montana. I went to Glacier National Park. I was there for like five or six days. Yellowstone National Park, just unbelievable. Came across through South Dakota, Minnesota into Wisconsin, went up and went across the Mackinac Bridge, up into the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, came down, um, went again through Illinois and um, Michigan, um, went to Cleveland, Ohio, to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know, ended up, I had a cousin in upstate New York, so I stayed there for four or five nights with her, and then came down the East Coast, you know, did hit parts of Jersey and Delaware, and stayed south of uh, Washington and uh, Lorton, Virginia. But, you know, areas like that, you stay there for four or five nights. And I went into D.C., went to the Vietnam Memorial and the Martin Luther King Memorial and Jefferson, you know, did the touristy stuff. From there, I, I did the, um, the Skyline Drive, 105 miles, 463 miles of the Blue Ridge Parkway, and for good measure, 50 miles of Great Smoky Mountain. Ended up in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, the home of Dolly Parton. I didn't get to see Dolly, but went through Kentucky and ended up, did another rally in Kentucky, ended up in Missouri, came down from Missouri into Arkansas, and then cut across. I stayed in a Cracker Barrel in Tupelo, Mississippi, Elvis's hometown, mm -hmm. where his birthplace. Took a couple hours in the morning, went over and saw that, and saw a statue in downtown, and then made my way back through Alabama into Florida again, back home. Seven months, two days, 26,000 miles, uh, three tire rotations on the road, two oil changes, you know, all the keeping up with the maintenance, but um, just an incredible trip. Incredible. So I'm assuming all of Alaska will be the highlight of the trip. That was definitely the highlight. Um, just, you know, but places like Texas were incredible too. You know, again, just so much of it. but. You know, like I have a rule where I only, I don't pull off the road, hard, you know, ever because it's dangerous and there's a lot of debris and stuff. I don't want to get a flat tire. And I only make one U-turn a day. But sometimes you would just be going along and you would see something and you're like, there's my one U-turn, you know, and you make a U-turn and go back and then I would pull over and get out. And like out in the middle of New Mexico, just 
And New Mexico is very barren, very open, and you have these mesas, I guess they're called, that stick up. But some family had gathered up tumbleweeds and used like plastic netting and made them into figures, and this was just before Easter, and they made them into figures of like bunny rabbits. Except like the two adult bunny rabbits, the mom and dad, were like five feet tall, but with big ears and a hat on and all this stuff. And I just had to turn around and go back and take a picture of that. And at that time, I had brought a bag of seashells with me from Florida. And at different campgrounds and stuff, I'd write like, hi from Florida and date it. And then, you know, leave it in the crook of a tree or, you know, underneath the corner of the picnic table. You know, just because I found stuff when I've been camping, you know, rocks that people painted and stuff. So I made sure one of the rocks that they had painted, like an Easter egg, I made sure to leave a, a shell underneath it hoping that one of their kids would come out um, and they're taking it apart. But um, just, in, in, you know, there's just incredible things out there, that, things I never even imagined that existed and uh, ghost towns along the highways in Texas that, you know, the front of the store was there and you look through the door and the whole back of the building is gone. But it was like the highway cafe and, and across the street was a building that was obviously a gas station at one point. And had a sign in the window, pray for rain. Well, you just wow. wonder what happened yeah. to that town. Yeah. You know? So, obviously that was an epic road trip. And you probably experienced all different kinds of, of weather and, and, you know, climate changes. So, as far as the mods that you've done to the Rouser, what would be one thing, the one thing the that one, was the, the most important? The one thing is one of the most expensive things I... I have, it's a, the brand name is Espar, it's actually some real long German name, but it go, we call it, go by Espar, and it's a diesel heater, I can show it to you if you want, it's 7,000 BTU, it has a, a 5 liter diesel tank that I have mounted, it uses probably less than a liter overnight, and the last couple of nights here, it's 72 to 75 degrees inside the camper, when I was in West Texas, it was 20 degrees at night, and it was 72 to 75 degrees wow. inside the camper. Wow. So that's a game changer there. After that, it's the solar panels and the power you know, unit that I have. Right. Right. But one, just the one thing, definitely that diesel heater. Diesel heater. You All want right, to open guys. the door? I got the bed made. So <laughs> if you look at what he just showed us, I mean, 26,000 miles in a Rouser being towed with a Toyota Tacoma. Right, and I'll tell you this: Bob has a Facebook page. What's the name of it now, Bob? Bob's American Adventure 2023, and in January it'll change to Bob's American Adventure 2024. If you, I'm planning my next year trip already. If you guys want to see some amazing pictures and video clips of some beautiful country, then go on Facebook and join that group and you can literally scroll for hours and see some amazing shots of Alaska and other places along his travels. So, Bob, we appreciate you taking the time. And what's and, the name uh, of your YouTube video? We're Outdoor Observations. And, and definitely get on Outdoor Observations and you will see some of the most beautiful, well-lit, um, very imaginative dusk and dawn shots Plus some incredible uh, drone footage because this man and this lady, Ellen, are both an incredible videographer and, and photographer and drone photographer. Well, so. We appreciate that.
had twelve. Mm -hmm. Bypass is the uh, the presser of the generator surging, and uh, it bypasses that switch from being needed. Everybody's having fun at the Mill Dam Runaway Rally, people. Yeah. Bye. Bye. As this 2023 event comes to a close, I think I can speak on behalf of all of those in attendance and say thank you to Grace, Tressa, and all those that work behind the scenes to make this such a fun event. We appreciate all that you do, and we're already looking forward to next year. Thanks again. <laughs>